Hey guys, so I thought I'd take you along and show you the installation process on a buyer's tarp kit for a dump trailer or a dump truck. Uh, I guess the one thing different on some applications will mainly be that I already have brackets installed and they actually do line up. So these brackets you'd either have to weld on or drill mounting holes for, whereas I already have holes for it that are ready to go. So it's a plus for me, uh, maybe not so much for you. <laughs> but so basically uh, the kit comes with everything you need. It's gonna come with the, uh, the rod that you're gonna be going through. It actually has like a spacer in between and then the other end of the rod. It comes with uh, the, both the passenger side, which is this one, and then the driver side, which has this lock on it. it comes with the tarp. I'm installing on a big Tex uh, five by 10 dump trailer. So I got the five by 12 tarp kit. And I guess they recommend just to get the, whatever the two foot longer would be. So that's what I ended up getting. Uh, that's the crank for it. You get some of these hooks for the uh, pull strap. I'm actually probably not gonna install that, we'll see. But most likely I'm actually not gonna be doing that portion of it. And then it comes with some uh, bungees to secure it in the rear if you ain't got the anti-sail, I believe it's called, which is basically just a rod to go across the back. And uh, your pull roll and some hardware. Uh, it's 916 hard, er, uh, three ace hardware, so a nine sixteenths wrench, and then uh, some tap, uh, self tapping screws as well. So yeah, the first thing we're gonna do is just mount up our hardware, just to give us a measurement on what we need to cut down our tube to, as it this is gonna be too long for uh, our application here. All right, so now that we got that snugged up, we're just gonna take a measure in, in between the two. And this is inside length. And we got approximately 63 and 5 eighths. So 63 and 5 eighths, and then it says to subtract a quarter of an inch. So that would put us 63 and 3 eighths for the measurement in between this side and this side here. We'll take a measurement of that. And that's about 82. And uh, would that be uh, eight, nine sixteenths. So we're gonna have to cut this down quite a bit. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm actually gonna take it up on the bandsaw, but what you wanna do is whatever your width is, you wanna subtract it equally from each side. So we're gonna take a break here for a second, and I'm gonna run up there and cut this down to my uh, 62 and 3 eighths, or I think it was, just to double check, 63 and 3 eighths. So I'll be right back after I do that. All right, you guys, so now I've cut down these hex tubes on the outer. So what we'll do then is now I've marked, uh, I've made a mark now 18 inches in to the middle here, because this is a 36 inch piece, and that's gonna be the center of this. So what we'll do is slip both these ends in here approximately to halfway. Now remember we've got that quarter inch gap there that we're going to need to make. Now what it says to do is just measure this right now but I'm actually gonna just because it's that easy to remove I'm actually just gonna pop off one of these brackets and put it up in there because they want you to screw this together 
And I mean, I can understand why. It's just, uh, I, I, I don't want to make that move and then have it turn out to be incorrect or anything like that if my measurement's off just slightly. So I feel like it might just be best just to uh, loosen up one side here as it's easy enough and I'm going to slip this actually in. So long end's going to go to the driver's side here. go in there would be nice have to go over there and give it a little give it a little persuasion oh the set screw for this is actually in too far that's why so I'll loosen up the set screw here Slip this end in. Never mind, there's two set screws. Slip that end in there. Come around to this side. I'll loosen up the two set screws here. One there, one there, just like on the other side. Slip this end in. And then reposition this where it needs to be. I think the problem is that this this is a little bit bent here. There we go. That's better. So now we'll position this where it needs to be with our quarter inch gap here. And so there's our quarter inch gap right in there. And then it says to take two of these self tappers and we're just going to run them in through from two inches from that edge. Oop. We do want to make sure we see our line up here as well. Just make sure we're still good. I'll put that up there. That's our roll assembly there. And now being that I did assemble this, obviously I'm gonna to have to take it apart just to put the tarp in now. Handle dangle in there for a second. We'll grab our tarp, open this up. Then there will be a loop on one end of this. And that's going to be 
the end that we've put through here. Oh, I suppose they got loops on each end for that anti-sail kit. So it looks like they're both the same here. So we'll just pick this end and we'll fish it through here. And now the webbing, which is that right there, is only going to be on the back side. So we're going to put that down. So now that that's on there, we will reassemble this end here. And now at this stage, we can actually tighten this down. side here. And then what I'm going to do is just lay this out just like it would be just letting there's some pressure on it. So that looks just about perfect there. Next what we'll do is we'll take these fender washers they supply and self tappers and they want five of them put into in between the tarp so you go through the tarp itself and into that metal. And that's just going to prevent it from unrolling. So then you can put tension on it otherwise if you just spin this as you can see it's just going to go nowhere. So I'm actually going to position these bolts we already put in that direction. Start in the middle here. Now on this, on the last one here, I believe you want to go two inches from the end so then you don't interfere with this uh, pocket adapter here. But I want to make sure I'm going through the wedge, or the webbing here, the webbing strap, because that's going to be the most secure. Now same thing on this end, I'm going to try and go through the webbing itself, but uh, maintain, you know, some space off this edge. Now 
Now, I know that they said evenly. I should have done it on that side. I don't know what I was thinking. I forgot I'm going to put one at the end. So now I'll just space it right in between here. If it really bothers me, maybe I'll change it someday. So that's our uh, five tarp attachments there. All right, so next what we'll do is we'll use our eighth inch uh, hex key wrench and we'll tighten down our set screws. So the sprocket here slips on like so. Then you're actually going to have to pull the detent here and then lock it into place. And then you just want to push it all the way up against that bushing. And then we'll tighten down these set screws here. For this I'm using a four millimeter. It seems to fit better, but uh, I'm assuming it's a, a standard uh, wrench size. But I'm doing what works. So now that that's good and snug, we'll put on our handle. I guess it just goes on the outside here. And it looks like they've cut threads in here, which is kind of surprising because the bolt that they give you, uh, you know, has a nut on it. Well, that's funny. I mean, there's clearly threads cut in each side of this. I don't know if it was used for a different application and they just you know, decided to use it for this as well, but nonetheless, it threads right through. We'll just put our nut on the end of here. It's a lock nut. Well, it's a quarter inch, so I'm guessing it's a 7 16 So we'll just snug this on here. And there's your crank. And then you to unroll, you just use the detent and that'll unroll it. So that's our crank set up and then they have it so then you can flip it inwards to keep it up out of the way. So that's kind of nice. Then all there's left to do is actually go to the back and we'll install some bungee cords. And uh, so you choose, you could uh, install your uh, pole rope as well. All right, so they supply these two bungees here and then a number of hooks. What we'll do is we'll put two of them on here. And just crimp them on with a pair of pliers. And then we'll, because I plan on just using the corners here, and I'm sure you could use the middle ones if you'd like, but I feel like going right down to this bottom corner, if you can catch that in the camera, would probably be my best bet. So then what I'm going to do here is crimp on the one on the tarp here so then it'll always stay there. These pl 
hopefully your jaws are big enough. Yeah, it looks like I'll have to run back inside and grab some uh, larger players to crimp that. But in the meantime, I'll put these on here, crimp them on just like before to the strap itself. And I'll do the other side the same way. So that's going to be on there like so. And we'll crimp the other end on. And I'll just run and grab some uh, channel locks really quick. Alright, now that i got some larger channel locks here that will allow me to crimp those bigger guys, we'll set them up here. And like I said, we're just going to crimp these on here so then they can't really get removed. So we don't want them flying off and or misplacing them. So just like so, so now it's on there. We'll do the same to this side. Oops. There we go. So now if we wanted to tarp up, we'll just latch both sides. And then go up to the front of the trailer, turn out our handle here, and crank it up. And there you have it. So I think this is going to be great. I believe I paid about $160 for this one. It all depends on the size of trailer and everything. This is a buyer's kit. I just got it on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. But if this video did help you out, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.